This week, China's DeepSeek AI sent shockwaves through the tech community, sending the U.S. stock markets into a panic. Did China just win the AI race? No, not really. I'll explain. But did China's deep seek just do something pretty amazing? Yes, yes they did. I'll explain. So far, the year of the snake is off to a very interesting start. Let's get into it. So this is a story that's basically about two companies, America's OpenAI and China's deep seek AI companies. And although there's a lot of other people involved, this is who we'll be talking about. These are the main players. And as this story developed, the more I looked into it, the more just confusion and misinformation I found, especially with American mainstream media, which I found to be very frustrating. So I'm going to try and clear up some of this confusion, address some of this misinformation. Disclaimer, I'm not an expert in AI, far from it. <laughs> So between these two companies, we're actually talking about four different AI models. OpenAI developed ChatGPT, which I'm sure you've heard about. This is what's called a large language model, an LLM. And last month, DeepSeek developed its latest large language model, DeepSeek V3. DeepSeek V3 is very impressive because it was developed using extremely efficient coding and algorithms. This made it much cheaper to develop compared to other large language models. According to DeepSeek, it was trained using about 2000 NVIDIA's H800 GPUs. Now, these are powerful computer processors that are designed for training AI models, developing AI, but they're not the most powerful. These NVIDIA H800s, they're now currently banned to be sold to China. But they weren't always. You see, they were actually developed to bypass bands. NVIDIA basically modified a more powerful chip, the H100, in order to sell it to China. And according to DeepSeek, they used about 2,000 of these H800 GPUs to train its V3 AI. The cost of this training was about $6 million. And this is where the media is getting this $6 million figure from. Okay, the $6 million is just part of the cost of part of the training, part of the development. It's not the full cost. So to say that DeepSeek built an AI for just $6 million is false. It's categorically false. That's wrong. The market value of about 2,000 H800s is about $60 million. And that's just the GPUs. There's a lot of other development costs but it's still impressively cheap, especially compared to what other companies have spent. Now, there are some rumors that DeepSeek actually used about 50,000 of the more powerful H100 GPUs. I don't know if that's true, it's just a rumor. There's also a rumor that DeepSeek is subsidized by the CCP and that the costs are actually much higher. I think this probably is true because this is just straight out of the CCP playbook. This is something that they do. They've done it with solar panels and electric vehicles and a lot of other stuff. They throw enough money at a company so that the company can operate at a loss. That way they can corner the market. They have the lion's share of the market. And because DeepSeek is offering all of its services at an extraordinarily cheap rate compared to its competitors, mainly OpenAI, they are quickly grabbing the lion's share of the market. But V3 is not DeepSeek's only model. The big news is that they recently released their reasoning model, DeepSeek R1. And this is in direct competition with OpenAI's O1, which is also a reasoning model. Reasoning model AIs, they're very similar to large language model AIs, but they're more advanced. They can use what's called reinforcement learning, which basically means that they can recognize when they made a mistake and learn from that mistake and improve over time. What makes the DeepSeek R1 so impressive is that it also used extremely efficient algorithms and coding to reduce its power and reduce its cost. It's also much, much cheaper to use compared to its competitor, OpenAI's O1, much cheaper. But perhaps most impressively, is that it can be used locally without an internet connection. It can be run on a laptop. 
Now, of course, it does a better job when it's connected to the internet, but it's still extraordinarily significant that it doesn't need access to a supercomputer to work, to do its job. And this is what caused such a huge disruption in the stock market, especially among tech stocks. DeepSeek was able to demonstrate that you can get impressive AI performance without the need of a supercomputer, of high-performance computer chips. Impressive developments like this with reasoning model AI is extremely significant because experts tell us that the reasoning model AIs are basically the step before the goal, which is AGI, Artificial General Intelligence. AGI is the type of AI that we see in science fiction. Think Data from Star Trek or R2-D2 from Star Wars. It's an AI that can fully think and reason and learn on its own at an extraordinarily faster pace than a human ever could. And whoever develops AGI first will have a tremendous advantage over their competitors because an AGI can build a better AGI like a super AGI, it can improve upon itself. There's many people that believe that AGI can usher in just a golden era for humanity, solving problems and developing technologies like quantum computing and nuclear fusion, super cheap energy, brand new medical developments, all sorts of stuff. And of course, there's the argument that it could be an existential crisis for humanity. There are a lot of science fiction stories about this. So DeepSeek R1 has shown how just efficiency, super efficiency in coding can be competitive with brute strength computing power. But this actually gives an edge for Western companies. Why? You see, DeepSeek is open source. It's operating under an MIT open source software license. This means that Western companies can take a look at DeepSeek and apply their efficient coding to their own models because it's not really an argument of efficiency versus raw computing power. It's whoever can use both the best is going to win this AI race. And the Western companies are the only ones with the access to the most powerful, most cutting edge technology, the most powerful computing processors. But that's not the only thing that gives Western companies an edge on this race to AGI. There's more. DeepSeek R1 and OpenAI's O1, they're not the latest generation of reasoning models. OpenAI has already developed the next generation. They have OpenAI O3, and it looks like OpenAI's O3 reasoning model that this vastly outperforms O1 and DeepSeek's R1. OpenAI actually just skipped over the O2 name because of a potential trademark dispute with a UK company that's called O2, but that's not really important. The important thing is that they're already a generation ahead of what DeepSeek's latest model is. It's just that as of this video, the O3 model isn't available to the public yet. It's not available to consumers yet. And that's not all. There's even more reason why Western companies have an edge in this race to AGI. You see, one of the first things that President Trump did is he got rid of some regulations and oversights that was slowing down the development of AGI. And he helped establish the partnership and forming of the Starlink project. This is a partnership between OpenAI and Japan's SoftBank and some other companies. The Stargate project's whole goal is to develop AGI, and according to them, they have already secured $100 billion of funding, with another $400 billion available over the next four years. This means that the Stargate project is a half a trillion dollar venture partnership between the U.S. and Japan to develop AGI. I'm pretty sure that all these tech stocks are actually going to bounce back I mean, as I'm recording this, NVIDIA is still worth over double what they were worth this time last year. I own NVIDIA stock. I'm not worried. In fact, I bought more NVIDIA stock this week because it was on sale. Now, this is not investing advice. Don't take investing advice from me. I'm just not worried about it. I'm much more concerned about Trump's talks about putting tariffs on Taiwan. I don't like this. He was talking about putting tariffs on semiconductors and pharmaceuticals coming out of Taiwan. 
I really think that's a bad idea. And I hope this is just bluster. If Trump actually does put high tariffs on semiconductor imports into the U.S., it's going to give other countries a tremendous advantage. It's not going to help the U.S. That's not going to help the U.S. Right now, Taiwan and the U.S. have a very good relationship, win-win. I just hope it stays that way. And I think Trump is saying this because he wants more semiconductor manufacturing to happen within the U.S. So he wants companies like TSMC to even build even more manufacturing plants in the U.S., which I think they're probably open to do. I think it's also worth mentioning that DeepSeek is not without its flaws. At the end of the day, it's a Chinese company. And if you ask it any sort of questions that the CCP would find sensitive, it will give you a very ambiguous answer or it just won't answer at all. So it has its flaws. It's not perfect. But to give credit where credit's due, it's an extraordinarily impressive achievement. It is a very significant event in the development of AI. Well, let me know what you think. What do you think about DeepSeek? What do you think about AGI, artificial general intelligence? Do you think that AI will be a good thing for humanity? Or do you think that it could be an existential crisis? Personally, I hope that AI can not only help with new technologies, but also help humanity resolve its differences, maybe even show better forms of governance. Wouldn't it be cool if AI can help humanity reduce its conflicts, maybe even bring about world peace? That'd be nice, wouldn't it? All right, hey, thanks a lot for watching. A big thanks to my channel supporters. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I'll see you next time. Peace and love. I'll see you.